So just to explain, just we also saw in the case of Thailand, so we have investments, money coming into the country, right? In Thailand, what were people investing in? In Thailand? What kind of things were Thailand was getting a, a lot of loans? The Thai banks were getting a lot of loans, right? So Thai banks got a lot of loans. Where did they invest the money? In real estate. Is real estate endlessly growing? Does the real estate price just always go up and grow forever? No, right? So this isn't wasn't really we would call this as a speculative investment, not a productive investment. Speculative, right? Maybe you're making some new hotels, building some new hotels, building some new properties, then that's productive investment. But that's just a small part, right? People are just selling the property to each other. Okay? Getting big loans to buy property from each other. So that's all fine when the real estate price is going up. But what happens when the real estate price goes down suddenly? Can people pay back the loans and the investment? Hmm? What happens if the real estate price goes down? Can people can investors get their investment back? No. No, there's going to be a crisis, right? We saw in Thailand, we saw in the US in 2007. Both of those crises had their root in speculative investment in real estate. Okay? On the other hand, we have a different type of investment. Productive investment. So we invest in the US, in the stock market. We invest in a company, just any random company, Amazon, right? We invest in Amazon, okay? That is a productive investment. Amazon is using that money to pay their employees to build a business, not to speculate on the price of something which already exists going up or going down, right? So, can Amazon continue to grow? No. Hmm? This is uh, uncertain. Oh, not certain, but is it possible? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can it always grow? No. Keep growing? No. Hmm? No. Can it keep being profitable? Yeah. Making goods and being profitable? <laughs> yes. Right? You might say no, but currently Amazon is the world, one of the world's biggest online retailer. That area is growing, right, these days. Korea, you have G-Market. Okay? Yeah. So that's a productive investment. Can investors get their money back? Yes. Amazon is constantly making a profit. It's growing. Can I get my money back? Yes. Okay, so here I can get my money back, no crisis. It's a productive investment. Okay? This one, it's not a productive, it's a speculative investment. Okay? When the property price goes down, then investors can't get their money back, there's a crisis. If I invest in Amazon, Amazon, the people who work for Amazon are useless, right? They're no good. Amazon is badly managed, badly run company. Then will I get my money back? No, right? So people have confidence in the, U in the US company that Amazon is a well-managed company with good employees, right? Maybe the US has, if you look at the top 100 universities in the world, how many of them are from the US, right? US also has brain drain, takes the best graduates from around the world. They go to work in the companies, okay? So they have good employees, smart employees. They have good management, okay? So the company is I invest in this company, it can be productive, it can make profit. This type of investment is healthy. Can you understand that's a healthy investment? It's not a healthy, not a healthy investment. Okay? Real estate speculation is not a healthy investment. Unfortunately, because the average person in the US owns a property, the average person gets benefit from real estate speculation. So, they are the people who vote for the politicians who make the policy of which helps to promote real estate boom and bust. Okay. So we saw in the past that uh, 
the central bank used to be controlled by the people, but the people used to print too much money for themselves, right? So we have to take the central bank away from the people. So in my opinion, we have to take away regulation of the housing market away from the people. Because people, one way of people creating wealth for themselves, people who own property, is to make a, a housing market boom, right? But actually, attracting investment for the real estate market, uh, while it is good for the people in the short term, is not good for the health economy, it can make some crisis. But if, if I run for election, for example in Ireland we had a very serious real estate crisis, the price went down by 50%. If I run for election in Ireland and I say I want to reduce the price of houses, is anybody going to vote for me? Probably not, right? Most of the people who are voting, they own a house. So they don't want to reduce the price of the house. Right, so that's the kind of hurdle that we have that can help to cause uh, speculative real estate bubbles. But we can see many crises related to specul speculative investment, not productive investment. So the question is, in the US, is the current investment in the US productive investment or is it speculative investment? Okay, so... <coughs> Then we're going to talk about the solution. So to talk about the solution, we need to go back to the first question. Why does the US have a current account deficit? So who can tell me, give me some ideas. Why does the US have such a current account, high current account deficit? Okay. We have three main points, right? First one, Asia and the rest of the world are buying dollars to help their exports, right? Other reasons? Savings and investments, okay? US people, are they spenders or savers? Spenders. Spenders, right? We looked at that point before. Another reason, capital flows. We talked about US as a world financial center and people wanting to invest their money in the US. So, uh, this is just explaining, right? We, we said, the relationship between, we showed before the relationship between savings and imports and exports, okay? So the government is also spending, spending more money, okay? So that's also added on. The trade flow, the US imports too much. It cannot produce cheaply or innovatively enough to export goods. So US, we said the manufacturing base is disappearing. It's an issue in the U.S. election, always an issue in the U.S. Mexicans are taking our jobs first, right? When they made NAFTA 10 years or 15 years ago. Nowadays, Cambodians or Vietnamese or Chinese or Indians are taking our jobs, okay? Because they are producing the goods more cheaply. So U.S. Export, exporting goods is not as competitive. Uh, the share of U.S. equities in the world equities has increased, so more people are investing in, in the U.S. equities because of this uh, globalization. There's the global savings glut, okay? uh, the role of China. China has hundreds of millions of laborers in Western China. So is there a big difference between Western China and Eastern China? Chinese students, is there a big difference between Shanghai and Beijing uh, and so other countries, other cities in Eastern China and Western China? Explain, what is the difference? Uh, the demand of the level. Level of development? Yes, uh, and East China is more developed uh, and West China is uh, a lack of development. Yes, what about the income? Is there a big difference in income? Mm. May, uh, the income uh, in East China maybe the maybe one point five uh, about Western China. Oh the income is much higher in eastern China. Do you have a lot of migration from Western China to Eastern China? Yes. And some 
uh, some people from Western China also found jobs here in East China. They come to the east of China to find jobs. Do those people have a high education level? No. Right? How, where are they educated? High school, middle school, elementary school? Uh, generally, middle school and uh, a few is high school. Okay, so generally educated to middle school, right? Yes. So what kind of jobs do they do when they come to Eastern China? Uh, uh, they major uh, work in architecture and primary service. Okay, so basically we have hundreds of millions of laborers in Western China who is educated to middle school level, right? China needs to find jobs for all those people. So uh, exporting is one way for them to work, right? Apple has a ma massive factory in China, right? Yes. Other companies have massive factories in China. So the pe they can hire the people, they can export the goods, they can work. Okay? So because of this, China is accused of using currency manipulation to develop. So they're accused of manipulating the currency, keeping it very cheap in order to develop. Okay? To also to get the, the people working. So people in the United States enjoy life spending money. Perfect match. To America, right? So you can sell your goods, people in the US will buy them, okay? And uh, you can get the money, save the money, and then lend the money back to the US again to buy more goods. So that's the easy relationship, right? <clears throat> so we have to think about China. Why does China accumulate so much dollars? Okay? They want to keep the dollar appreciated for their exports. China wants a strong dollar and a weak foreign fee. Okay? Second one, they also want reserves to avoid financial crisis. Another reason why Asian countries buy US dollars. Because in 1997 we had the Asian financial crisis. And we already looked at Thailand. One of Thailand's problems was it didn't have enough foreign reserves. So that's why the other countries attacked Thailand. Do people attack, does the, which does the lion attack in Africa? The deer which is wounded or the healthy deer? Wounded deer, right? The weak deer. The weakest one, okay? So the Asian countries said, we are going to save a lot of foreign reserves so we don't have that kind of crisis again. Okay, so Korea also has a lot of reserves to avoid going into the crisis. So the speculators are not going to attack Korea. They can see Korea has a lot of US dollar reserves. Okay? So uh, other countries, also China, it's another reason why they want to build up US dollars. The rest of the world, they have a lot of savings. Europe is, is not growing as fast as the US, right? A little bit lower growth in Europe. Uh, other countries also accumulating U.S. reserves. So now we know the cause of the U.S. current account. We can look back again at our theory a little bit just before we decide on the solution. So we, we talked about coping with the current account deficit, right? We talked about depreciation, right? If the U.S. depreciate their currency, it's going to take time to affect the trade. There will be a J-curve. First, the trade, the current deficit could get worse. But over time, it could get better. Okay, so Thailand, this, this worked for Thailand in the longer term. Okay, Thailand depreciate their currency. At the start, they had a worse situation. But over a number of years, Thailand started, the trade balance started to improve. But would that work for the US or not? Okay. Uh, protectionism, Donald Trump idea, right? Put a big tariff on China. Okay, is that going to solve the problem? Is that a solution? Okay, stimulate national savings. Change the tax. Try to make US people save more. Right? Maybe in China, try to make the people consume more rather than saving as much. Okay, so discuss with your partners what do you think is a good solution? So you can write down in the action plan. This is your action plan. So we have two different 
situations. We have action plan, what does the US need to do? Action plan, what does the rest of the world need to do? Okay, so discuss with your partner. What do you think is the solution? What can be done to make the imbalance better? Yes. 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 Buying dollars is increasing, this is going to be, uh, like who is buying dollars? The US government, the central bank is buying the debt of the US government, then they're increasing the money supply. There's more debt and there's more, so I get a loan, the US government gets a loan of let's say 40 billion dollars, right? Or the US government gets a loan of 50 billion dollars. So what are they going to spend the money on? Defense, okay? Medical care, so on. So all this money goes into the economy, or all this money goes into the economy? All this money goes into the economy, there's more money supply, okay? Then this is the higher chance of inflation. <coughs> so I can put 40 billion, pay to the army, pay to the doctors, pay to the pensioners, or I could put 50 billion to pay to the doctors, the army, and pensioners. If I pay 50 billion, they, everybody has more money, money supply is increased, and we can have higher prices in the, in the economy.
take another couple of minutes. Just if you're finished, discuss with your partner about your solution. Okay. You already wrote down your solution. What should be done in the U.S. What should be done in the rest of, by the rest of the world to make the imbalance lower? Then discuss with your partner about your idea. Do they have the same idea? Okay, so then let's discuss about the solution. So, uh, Kim Arun, what do you think is a solution? The US people increase savings. How? So, action plan, we say what needs to be done, but we also say how we do that. How are we going to make the US people increase their savings? US people have a culture of spending. They like spending. They have a lot of space in their garage to put the things. They don't need them anymore. To change their expectations. Hmm? Uh, they should think that there will be some negative situation in the future. Okay. So that they won't spend and save more. So change people's expectations. Maybe you need to tell them that we have a lot of debt in the country. so. We need to be more responsible. Maybe okay. government should uh, decrease their spendings and people will see that something is wrong. Okay, so follow example of the government. So the government is also spending too much money in the US. Okay, so the government could spend less money. And then maybe the people will also follow the example. So announce, you mean Obama can announce to the people they should save more money? Anything else we can do to get people to save money? Increase the interest rate. If the interest rate is increased, people might save more. 
So allow the interest rate to increase. Okay, anything else? the more invest project company than like the real estate. Okay, so make a policy to invest for people to invest. So for example we could try to limit the Regulate, regulation, right? The investment in, they have a real estate trust in the US, or I call REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. So you don't have to buy a property to invest in real estate in the US. You can just, if you have just $100, you can put your money in a fund. That fund invests in real estate, okay? So you, you can also invest in US real estate if you want, with just $100. You can, in the, in the Korea, they have some financial product, maybe on the Shinan Online Banking or another one, which is linked to the real estate in the US, right? So we could try and regulate people investing in, in real estate and try to encourage them to invest in a more productive area. Okay. Anything else? An Irish finance minister, when Ireland had a good time, he... he he was quite forward-thinking. He says, now we are in the good times, so instead of people spending all their money, we want to make them save some money for the bad times. So he made a program, a special government program. If you save them so much money every year for five years, at the end of five years, the government pays you 25% extra. So that kind of program, savings program, right? So a lot of people join the savings program and then at the end of the five years they got their money back, right? So it, was, it helped our Irish people a little bit and there was the crisis time, at least they had some savings because of the government saving program. Okay, so then what about the rest of the world? What can the rest of the world do? Kim Yeji. Yes. Just consider the US side. Min Fukki. Yes. What about the rest of the world? Yun Sang Ho? Yes. What about the rest of the world? Diversity. Diversity by... Uh, 